Welcome to Sir Citizen and the news update. Alpha 3.13 has landed on the test servers and we take a look at some of the most important and interesting features in the overview. And to start with the Constellation series from RSI has returned to its old size and strength and is once again one of the strongest and most interesting ships in Star Citizen. But let's start with the new, or rather greatly expanded cave systems, which have not only been visually improved, but also offer various access options. You don't have to find them yourself, but are given several different missions to do so. From the investigation mission, in which you have to find a missing person, to the bounty mission, in which you have to take out the target, it's all there. And since ship-to-ship -ship docking has also been implemented for the Constellation series, we explore the caves directly with the usable Snapfighter. Here's a short guide on how to use the new docking mechanics and what you should avoid in order to dock and undock successfully. As soon as we have activated our Snapfighter, we can undock it by pressing the M key. This releases the clamps and we float directly under the Constellation. And as we can see, this also works in the landed state. The important thing here is that the carrier ship does not move. And with a small snap, we can then explore the cave of the small category. It is best to be careful and slow here, as we have a lot of space but are also moving very fast with the snap. At the bottom of the cave, we can land as usual and explore the cave. Of course, there is a detailed guide for the various cave activities and missions soon. We first dock with the Snapfighters back at the Connie. To do this, we first have to mark the Connie as a target with the T button and then come within a few meters of our carrier ship. With the N key, we can then make a docking request, which is automatically granted if the ship is our own. For a foreign ship, we need the captain's confirmation. To dock, we can press the N button for a longer time to dock automatically. Otherwise, we must bring the circles together until they turn green and then slowly approach the docking side. We will also look at the manual docking and undocking in a detailed guide, as more ships and stations are added here. All through, the docking system remains the same. The next cave is the medium category, where we can just about land with the cunny. Basically, you can orientate the cave categories on the ship categories, which are then also sufficient. However, the bigger our ship, the tighter it gets. We can just about get the cunny in without scratching it. With a ship of the size small, like a Gladius, it is much more relaxed and less dangerous. And this cave, which is called a sinkhole and is only accessible by a ship, lies a good 200 meters below the earth. And as we slowly descend, the atmosphere is definitely good. We get back into the Snapfighter and duck down to take a closer look at this cave. However, even caves of medium size are quickly too narrow for a Snapfighter, which is why we will spend most of our time in the caves on foot. However, a few hundred meters further on, we make our way through the narrow passages, and in the caves of size large, we have then much more space for exploration. We dock back at the Connie and go straight into one of the most important new features in Star Citizen, which benefits the Constellation series much more than other ships in the verse. 
The N key allows us to dock here again. Pressing the button for a longer time automatically adjusts your flight path and allows you to dock safely. The way up is then just as narrow as the way down. In any case, the new caves and especially the possibility of entering them with a vehicle and a ship offer new possibilities and creates a very great atmosphere. I had a wow on my lips at least a few times. And here we see how smaller ships manage in sinkholes. The Gladius had no difficulties or space problems, the dimensions become clear once again. These caves are huge, and that just one of the middle ones. Let's move on to the most important feature of 3.13, the SDF shield technology. Not only does it make shield hold a thing of the past, it also makes many ships competitive again that we were often left in the hangar before, and here I mean the Connie in particular. And after several tests again NPC opponents as well as with different weapon systems, we can confirm that shield holds are finally history. There are still smaller packages of damage that can come through, but they are extremely small and negligible. And the visuals are of course also a significant improvement compared to before. I can already see a whole armada of constellations fighting their way through their bounty mission. And on the subject of combat, here's a tip for docking in particular. When docking and undocking you should definitely not move the carrier ship as this can cause you considerable damage, if you survive at all. In combat, the Snuff Fighter offers a not to be underestimated improvement of our offensive capacities and is really fun. Teamwork, multi-crew and fun all in one. Tip top, German saying. But we'll take another look at the STF shields in detail and test them with various weapons looking at some areas in particular. For this we have taken the new Cyclone MT which is also coming with 3.13. This is the dedicated combat version of the Cyclone variants. Here you can see very well through the ballistic cannon how the shields are penetrated and the projectile flies on, if it does not hit the hull. The shields are clearly penetrated here. The damage that arrives at the hull is, however, significantly weak depending on the ballistic weapon. By the way, the new Cyclone handles like the other variants, but impresses with a powerful armament. Of course, you will also get a detailed guide to this. Next, let's take a look at the physics system, which lies behind the shield technology and of course interacts directly with it. For this we change the target and of course our weapons. The SCF shields are also implemented in ground vehicles and work correctly. With a light target and comparatively heavy hits, the kinetic energy is transferred to the target and we can make the cyclone dance here. The SDF shields adapt to the contours of the ship or vehicle and are variable. If a part of the ship is missing, the shields change accordingly. Every hit is mapped correctly and visually and we can always see exactly where our hits land. And the colors here is the indicator of the condition of the shields, ranging from blue, which indicates a very good condition, to red, which indicates a critical condition. 
as soon as there is no more coloring. The shields in this segment are deactivated. Here we see this color change very clearly due to the permanent load on a single shield segment. It becomes noticeably weaker and eventually fails, whereby any damage then goes to the ship's hull. And here we notice very quickly when the shields are no longer active. The SDF shields don't just work, they are a real and distinct addition to Star Citizen. A completely different topic, but no less interesting, is the gold standard that the Aegis Gladius has received with 3.13. This involves a few minor changes. These are some minor visual improvements to the exterior, but there is also a lot of new stuff underneath the skin of this Squadron 42 star. The general design has been adapted, such as a changed paint scheme, the unique ship identification on the wings, improved air intakes on the top and changed position lights. For a direct comparison of the previous and the new version, I recommend the ship guide to the Gladys here in the channel, which is only a few weeks old, so that you can keep an eye on the changes, shouldn't you not be able to discover them otherwise. But since the biggest changes are underneath the fairing, let's take a closer look. And one thing first, this is the first step towards repairing and maintaining ships by the player himself. The physical components have been implemented in the Gladius and we can see each of these components and access them directly. The service access could be a way of making a ship accessible with the later hacking mechanics. And because most of the components are deployed, we can repair them later, replace them or steal them from other ships. This will open up completely new game mechanics and possibilities in the future. And there is also access to the fuel, which implies that we can actively refuel our ship ourselves, which has already been announced by CAG and an upcoming feature that is actively being worked on. But what I found most interesting about the excesses was the compartment for personal items, suits, equipment, food and so on. The weapons compartment is already a familiar feature and is also present in some other ships. The rest of the ship's components can be found on the top. Here the animations as with the two shield generators here are also well done and down to the last detail and further increase the immersion and credibility. And maybe you have an idea what a rear component here could be? A data recorder or something like this? All in all, the Gladius is one evolutionary step ahead of most other ships. And as a glimpse of what's coming soon, it's a real pleasure to look forward to. Repair, physical components and more are more than just pure optics. I'm really looking forward to installing a powerful captured shield generator in my own ship. That's a whole different kind of loot mechanics. And finally, I'll leave you with the visual details of the Gladys in Gold Standard. I hear you at the conclusion.
hope you liked the video and leave me a like and a subscribe here. Battlefield 3.13 is not only a small update, but there is a lot in it. And we still have a lot of things we haven't talked about yet. But for that, there will be some other videos, guides and tutorials soon, which should expand and ease your life in the verse. But as always, I'm interested in your opinions and comments, either under the video or in our Discord. What do you think of the new update 3.13? Useful or wasted time? But the most important thing at the end, a big thank you to all Patreons, channel members and Twitch subscribers. You are a huge motivation and without you the whole thing wouldn't be possible in this form. Thank you guys, you rock. And of course there are some giveaways, again, ships, 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 subscriber flares and much more. You can find out how to participate in the Discord or in the video description. I say goodbye, until next time, and as always, see you in the verse.